queues. Let's start from the queues. So queues are pipes. In fact, are pipes to transfer the data between tasks in FreeRTOS and ERTOS in general. The transfer of the data can be done as well from interrupt to the queue. But in this case, please remember that the interrupt which would operate on the queue should have the correct priority number not higher than specified as a max syscall within freertos config.h file. By default, the queue is behaving as a FIFO, so first in, first out, and can be redefined to perform as a last in, first out a structure by using xqueue send to front function. The problem is that uh, this functionality is not available within CMC's RTOS API. So in case you would need it within your implementation, please use FreeRTOS API instead, which is much more flexible than CMC's RTOS. All data sent by the queue must be the same type declared during queue creation phase. It can be a simple data variable like a char, integer, long, or it can be a structure. Within CMC's RTOS API, there are two types of the queues. The message queue, where you can send only the integer data or a pointer or a structure, or mail, where you can send the memory blocks. We will focus within this training on this first uh, type, so the message queue. Length of the queue is declared during creation phase and is defined as a number of items which will be sent via queue. Operations with the queues are performed in a critical sections using base pre-register, so we are sure that none other task uh, nor the interrupts uh, which can perform any operations on the OS will be executed during the operations of, uh, on the queue. Tasks uh, can be blocked on uh, operation on the queue, so on sending or receiving the data, uh, with a given timeout or infinitely. If we have uh, multiple tasks which are blocked uh, on waiting or for receiving or sending the data within the queue, the only task with the highest priority will be unblocked when the data will be available. So the first criteria to select the task which would cooperate with the queue is the priority. Highest priority task is always selected first. Then if we have all of the tasks with the same priority, the task that has been waiting for the longest time will be unblocked. Here we can see a typical use case of the queue. In this example, we will have the following components. Queue with length of four elements, the same size, a sender task and a receiver task. At the beginning, sender task is sending message one to the queue. Receiver is not yet requesting the data. In the next phase, sender task is sending message two to the queue. After this, we have two components in the queue. As it is a FIFO, so first in, first out, message 1 will be read as a first one. In the third phase, sender is not sending the data, but receiver task gets one message from the queue. After this, message 2 becomes a first component to be read and it is done in the fourth phase. In the fifth phase, we have an empty queue and no activity neither on sender nor on receiver task. Let's have a look uh, how we need to create the queue. So it is uh, very similar to the tasks. So to create the queue, we need to specify uh, some attributes of it. So in this case, it's much, much more simple because we are specifying only the, the queue name, in this case, queue one. And then we are executing the function OS message queue new with uh, three arguments. And the first one is, uh, let's say, the maximum number of the messages in the queue. Then we need to specify what is the message size in bytes. So it is the single component within the queue, its size. And then the third component is, let's say, the pointer to the attributes which specified. So in this case, uh, it is the structure which contains the name and some other components which would be filled in during the creation of the queue. As a return of this function, we are receiving uh, the queue handle start within the type OS message queue ID underscore T. If we will receive null, it would mean that uh, there is a problem with the creation of the queue and most probably we've got some issues with the memory allocation. So we need to verify whether there is enough memory space uh, to allocate new resources. To delete the queue, we need to execute the function OS message queue delete. And the only argument is a queue handle 
which uh, has been received during the creation of the queue and uh, the return value is os status underscore t which inform us about the successfully or not uh, operation of this uh, deletion uh, so once it is always okay it so zero it means that everything went uh, correctly and the queue has been deleted otherwise uh, there there were some issues with the operation let's have a look uh, on two basic functions uh, which can be used together with the queues the functions to put and receive the data to and from the queue to put the data into the queue uh, we've got a dedicated function is message queue put it is uh, in fact calling QX queue send within FreeRTOS API. This function requires four arguments. The first one is a handle to the queue. The second one is a pointer to the buffer uh, of the message which we would like to send into the queue. Then there is a message priority which is not used within the current implementation. And the last one is a timeout in milliseconds to wait till operation will be completed. And here is the important message. If our function will be not successful, so it will be not possible to put the data within the given timeout, the OS status underscore T returned value will be different from zero. It will be OS timeout. So it is very important while coding uh, the application with uh, using uh, OS functions to check the return value of the functions, especially those OS status underscore T type. Because in this case, we will have the information whether the function was successful or not. Okay, let's continue. So, the risk, how to receive the data from the queue. For this, uh, we've got a dedicated function OS message queue get. Return value is exactly the same. So, this is OS status underscore T type. And uh, again, we need four arguments. Starting from the queue handle, then the pointer to the buffer for the message to get from the queue then the message priority which is not used and should be null and at the end the receiving timeout given in milliseconds we've got some more functions which can operate on the queues which is worth to know uh, so for example we've got a dedicated function to reset a message queue to initial empty state for this uh, we need to execute os message queue reset and as an argument we need to specify the queue handle and the status of the operation is classical OS status underscore T. Then we can get the number of messages stored in the queue by calling the function OS message queue get count. And again, we need only the message handle, the queue handle. And we can have the available space in the message queue. So for this, we've got the function OS message queue get space. And again, the only argument is a queue handle. So it can be useful in some particular cases when we would like to have more control on the queue, which is operational, for example, by many tasks. Let's have a look on the queue parameters, which are grouped within the structure of OS message queue 8tr underscore t defined within cmc's underscore os2.h file. We have seen this uh, already within uh, the creation of the queue. At the time, uh, we have specified uh, within this structure only the name. And as you can see, this is the only configurable uh, part uh, which is available within the CubeMX. And uh, the rest of the attributes are set uh, by the application after the creation of the queue. So from those, uh, we can see the attribute bits then we see the pointer to the let's say the queue control block area then we can see the control block size of the queue then we can see the pointer to the queue data storage area so the storage on the objects of the data sent via the queue and would be stored and then we can see the size the data size area of the queue so those components are filled in by the code after the creation of the queue we need to specify only the queue name. Here on the slide we can see the queue structure management. Uh, so in fact uh, it is the control block of the queue. So it's similar to task control block but uh, this one is uh, in fact queue control block. It is defined within the queue.c file and uh, as you can see it has uh, multiple fields starting from the pointer to the beginning of the queue storage area then we've got the pointer to the end in the queue storage area so the head and tail like in the classical pipe 
And then we've got some additional pointers uh, which are reflecting the number uh, of the free, let's say, slots within the queue. Important message is uh, within the frame where you can find, uh, let's say, two lists. Uh, the first one is the list uh, of, uh, let's say, the tasks which are waiting to send data to the queue. It is stored uh, in a priority order. And the second one is a list of the tasks that are blocked waiting to read from the queue. It is stored as well uh, in a priority order. And based on these, uh, once the queue can exchange the data with the task, uh, based on this list, the selection is done. Uh, which task can uh, take the data or can send the data to the queue. Then we've got the number of the items currently stored within the queue. We've got uh, the length of the queue defined uh, as a number of items uh, to be held, uh, not in a number of bytes. This is important. Then uh, there is a size of the each item which uh, is stored within the queue. This is very important. And the rest of the components uh, are not that important. And uh, the last three, please have a look, are related to the tracing possibility, which is allowed uh, within FreeRTOS. So once you use uh, trace facility, you have uh, additionally queue number, queue type, and uh, some uh, additional parameter which can be monitored within the debug session. So those would be assigned to queue and can be monitored within a debug session. So it can be helpful during the development phase. Here we can see some comparisons of queue functions across different APIs. Please notice that within FreeRTOS API, we have much more possible options of data management within the queue. As you can see, we have some options, uh, queue sent to back, uh, queue sent to front, uh, queue peak, uh, which means that we can have a look uh, what is inside the queue without taking the data from it. Uh, it is not the case of uh, CMC's OS API, uh, which contains much less functions on this, but what is uh, positive uh, within CMC's OS is that it is not necessary for us to pay attention which function we need to select once we call it from the task and which one once we call it from interrupt. The selection is done automatically within the function. It is uh, defined within CMC's underscore OS.c file. Thank you for watching this video.